ladies and gentlemen, ladies and gents, I've gotten a lot of calls from people who have friends, relatives who are incarcerated, and they have been asking for my assistance, and I've been telling them that it's a long and audacious process. So, I know that some of you are incarcerated, and you are listening to the videos, and if you notice, I just need you guys to understand, when you click on the link now that's underneath the video, it's going to send you here. When you get here, you're going to have to click on one of the two. The first one, they're not the same. The first one is the regular form for the people who are not incarcerated. The second one is the form for the people who are incarcerated. It actually says, under color and authority of law, incar dot hyphen form. So the second one. Both put up at the same time today because I had to redo it. I had to correct some deficiencies. You know, I still got to correct this one. I hit the I instead of the... I was tired when I did edu... edu... Cition. Okay? So, this is the education on the criminal lien process. Ladies and gentlemen, everybody wants to know how I got people out of jail. I followed this process right here. This was the original get out of jail. This was the original diplomatic immunity process. And I just added to the process. Everybody wants to know how I did it. First, I'm a servant of Jehovah. I asked him for his help. So six people, myself three times. No, myself one two three yeah myself three times and four other people so it's seven people Jose out of Puerto Rico and the only thing I did for him was just told him to go talk to his attorney but when I actually did the paperwork uh, Francis was one as a matter of fact now that I recall Francis was two cases the only thing is the second case she stayed on probation I did not they were threatening her Francis is older. I didn't want to cause her any more problems. I didn't want them retaliating against her. So the second time with Francis, the first time was dealing with her mortgage. The second time it was dealing with the IRS. Okay, Francis is not like many of you. She's not the aggressive person. If you talk to Francis, man, Francis is knowledgeable. She's the one that you go to when you needed information. That's Francis. But, now, oh, the other thing is, you see how this is right here? I don't know why that did that in the transfer. It is a computer glitch. Because if you see, it doesn't say anything like that in the actual title. So, I'm going to not worry about that. I Just a heads up that that's the case. Uh, ladies and gentlemen, we put that document up there. This is just so that you guys know what we're giving you. The education on the criminal commercial lien process. Remember, you don't file a commercial lien on just anybody's property. You can't just walk up and put a lien on somebody's property. You have to have justification. That's why you're going to take these complaints against these judges. If you're afraid they're going to come after you, they're going to cause you problems, they're going to sit up there and retaliate, well, document your record. File your complaint against them. Do not add in the kitchen sink and the water and the fountain and the faucet and the washers and the pliers and the wrench. Do not add everything in the kitchen sink. It already has that already in the complaint. All you have to do is add your information. Just give the details of what happened. We already explain what the law says. We already explain why you have the right to complain. That's already been explained. The only thing you have to do is say, this is what happened. And if you are in jail, do a motion to vacate based on fraud upon the court and upon your person. A motion to vacate based on fraud upon the court and upon your person and support it with your affidavit and complaint. 
get it notarized put it on the record ladies and gentlemen the idea of accepting the true bill or the charging instrument or the complaint if you're on a state level it's a complaint getting a certified copy of that document and writing on the back of it your acknowledgement and acceptance of that agreement acknowledgement and acceptance of that agreement pay it to the order of the clerk of the court and what I'm going to suggest I want you to follow me I want you to follow me this is what I did with Francis we got a copy of the original charging instrument I got several certified copies I sent one to the presiding judge of the court I sent one to the presiding judge of the case who technically was the same person I sent one to the Supreme Court of the state I sent one to the attorney uh, the district attorney for the state no I'm sorry the Attorney General apologize get that correct the Attorney General for the state I sent one to the Attorney General for the United States now hold on so that y'all don't get too far ahead I sent an hour style money order for Francis two million dollars for each of those parties I'm not telling you to do that I'm just telling you what I did and after I did all of that guess what I did I didn't just send the money orders to all of those individuals and sit back and wait I sent them a letter telling them and that's what your judge alleged criminal conduct complaint is all about tell them about how that judge was bringing disrepute upon the court and upon the court's reputation uh, there was something else I'm trying to remember it it's not major I'm trying to remember what the other thing was but after I sent this to all of the parties along with the money order I just waited why because there's nothing else you can do but wait why because it's a waiting game Francis was released from jail five days after I sent out that information six months later Francis was the case gone just dropped within a year and a half of that the judge was removed from the bench supposedly because he retired but trust me this idiot wasn't getting ready to retire you could tell by the way he sat on that bench he was the presiding criminal judge and the presiding judge of the court he was not getting ready to retire he was a man of power presiding criminal judge and presiding judge of the court ladies and gentlemen this is what I did in my case I couldn't send them the original indictment I couldn't send them the original anything couldn't send them a certified copy of anything I did the paperwork I filed the paperwork for myself on the record now twice I told everybody uh -uh, I ain't filing nothing don't y'all dare put nothing on the record I'm gonna let my God take care of everything that's why I say I got to give him the credit because each of these times it was with his help because Jehovah is who I rely on I know there's a bunch of idiots out there that don't like the name Jehovah I don't care I know there's a bunch of idiots out there who say they don't believe in Jehovah I don't care what I can tell you is I am living proof that Jehovah exists because even with Jose in Puerto Rico I told him to ask Jehovah for his help Jose came back with a smile he literally danced around the entire pot Jose was six foot six 260 pounds and he takes off his clothes and runs through the pod naked celebrating it's Puerto Rico okay that's what they did in Puerto Rico but I joke with you not about this Jose just wanted to be home in time to see his baby born that I told him to talk to Jehovah about it be specific ask Jehovah and if he was sincere in his request Jehovah would provide him a specific answer to his prayer but I've been telling people that since 1998 when I first went through a jail system that if they asked Jehovah and if they were specific that they would and use his name that he would answer their prayer look guys he's not a genie you cannot a genie in a bottle you cannot rub 
the side of a piece of glass thinking that he's going to answer every last one of your requests. He doesn't work that way. If you're in dire strait, like I was when I laid on that operating table and I said, oh, Jehovah, help me, and I survived, or when my family were traveling to New York, we were on the road, and the vehicle skidded on the ice, and we were going off the side of that bridge, and the water was freezing because it was ice, and there were eight of us, uh, seven, eight, nine of us in that vehicle, and of the nine, seven of us were children, we would not have survived. And my father go, oh, Jehovah, next thing you know, the vehicle lands back on two wheels and goes straight without any skidding or anything. So all I can tell you, the scriptures say that my God's name is a strong tower into it the righteous run. Go ahead. It says the name of Jehovah, not the name of Baal, not the name of Roshnish, not the name of Ra, but the name of Jehovah is a strong tower. So every time I've asked people to use Jehovah's name, they have all told me about their success. So when I tell you of my success, it is because I'm a servant of Jehovah and I have faith in my God. I use his name, not just when I'm in trouble, but I use his name all the time because I'm not afraid to use his name. I'm not scared of his name. And I know how to respect his name so as to not use it in vain. So ladies and gentlemen, everybody wants to, the people who are incarcerated, they want this information. So when I did this judicial criminal conduct complaint, remember it was, it was for people who have been through the jail process, the court system, and have not gotten redress. I just spoke with another guy today. They're trying to take his $5 million property. And the judge just made a decision for them to sell his property. You can't sell my property. Uh-uh. Here, you ignorant mother. This is a criminal complaint against you. I'm filing it with you. I'm filing it with the presiding judge, and I'm sending it to the judicial council, which in the federal level, and that's bankruptcy court, in the federal level is called the United States Office of the, uh, the Administrative Office of the United States Courts. Guys, you're going to send the complaint, the criminal complaint, to all of the items listed at the bottom of the complaint. Do you want to send this complaint? You want us to forward this complaint? You're not going to wait for them to forward your complaint. You're going to send your complaint. My screen is not showing me anything, so that's why I had to do this. So give me a second. These are all the places you're going to send it. Plus, you're going to send it to the administrative office of both the local and federal court. So that's the judicial council. They're both called administrative offices. And then you're going to send it to the Federal Bureau of Investigation. Send it to the uh, Department of Justice. Send it to the Department of Defense. Because we are in a war setting, ladies and gentlemen. During a war setting, this is a civil government. It's a provisional government. All right, look, I got to go. I have a training session that I got to get started with. I hope this information proves beneficial, especially to those of you who have loved ones who are in jail. Look, ladies and gentlemen, I can tell you for a fact, I know uh, quite a bit of people who are in jail who did not commit anybody's crime, who did not violate a single law. This last stint that I just went through, that was just somebody retaliating because I filed a complaint against them with the county. That's why I'm doing this, because I told those ignorant mothers if they continued to with me that I wasn't going to let it go. Well, now I'm letting all of you know what I'm doing. This I have been planning to put together. That's why it took me so long. I've been planning to put this together for so long. You know what? This ain't supposed to be like this. Something is wrong. So let me let me shut that down. See how that top was? That's a glitch. You see that right there? I can't see it. So I do know that the one that um the one that I just shut down should not be coming up like this and this one i'm going to shut this one down this is the criminal lien commercial lien the most potent weapon this is the document that i was following to help arrest um arresticate 
I, is what I want to say, okay? Eradicate myself out of that facility, okay? I said eradicate because that's the best word that I can give when somebody arrests you and you, you want to unarrest yourself. All right, look, hey, guys, like I said, there it is. I knew it wasn't messed up. Uh, I knew it was just a glitch. You may not have saw what I saw, how split up everything was, but I knew it was just a glitch. Those of you who are incarcerated, for use by those without computer and or internet access, this one is for you because you can hand fill it out. Give it to everybody. Look, you guys don't know. A judge gets enough complaints against him. He's no longer a judge because he interferes with the reputation of the court and the public perception. That's why you want to get it to people who are incarcerated so they can give it to other people who have the same judge and file your complaints about that judge. Do not talk about the fact that he, he made your boo-boo hurt. Do not talk about the stupid stuff. Talk about the Ten Amendments, the Bill of Rights, the violation of those rights. Do not talk about anything else. Everything else is a privilege, okay? Tomorrow, I'm going to show you a letter I received from the DMV and show you guys how the DMV wrote and what they wrote and why they wrote what they wrote. Enough of this stupidity that's going on with these agents of government. It is not government that is wrong. It is the agents who are violating rights and who are violating the law. All right. Ladies and gentlemen, there you go. Have a good day, all right? I hope this video turns out to be beneficial for all of y'all. Gotta go.